on this special edition of Independent Sources, giving thanks non-traditionally. For us, Thanksgiving Day is a holiday of freedom. This is so important for the people who came from the former Soviet Union. And culinary fusion or confusion on the holidays. It's just exciting, I think, to be able to have a time. I think more families are getting together. You know, a lot of people come in for Thanksgiving but aren't necessarily together on Hanukkah, so this is a time that they can come together. And then especially fun is the food. Those stories and more coming up on Independent Sources. Welcome to a special Thanksgiving episode of Independent Sources. I'm Zyphus LeBron. Thanksgiving, the highly anticipated and quintessential American holiday. Most Americans look forward to a day of family, food, and football. But what about newcomers to these shores, as the pilgrims were nearly four centuries ago? How are they celebrating this day that in many cases is foreign to them? We thought we'd explore how some immigrants to this country are putting their own spin on the most traditional of American holidays. Sarah Pizan sat down with Elizabeth Velez, Michael Nemirovsky, and Pastor Gil Monroes to learn a little more. Pastor Gil Monroes, Elizabeth Velez, and Misha Nemirovsky, thank you for joining us. So, Elizabeth, how do you celebrate Thanksgiving? Well, my family is from uh, Puerto Rico originally, and Puerto Rico celebrates Thanksgiving with as much fervor and excitement as we do here in the United States. In fact, the origins are very similar. Christopher Columbus went to mainland USA in, uh, it wasn't USA at the time, America, mainland America in 1492. He went to uh, Puerto Rico in 1493. And so the cultural changes uh, that Christopher Columbus kind of started are very similar in, in both. So Thanksgiving's a big holiday over there. Uh, we celebrate it very much the same way we do here, except for a little bit of change, a little bit more spice and flair, I think, in the cooking. Well, tell us a little bit more about what exactly you serve sure. on this holiday. We serve a traditional turkey, but we do it a little bit differently. Uh, it's called pabochon, and it's slow roasted, marinated garlic, adobo, seasonings and spices. I'm getting hungry <laughs> now that we're talking about it. Um, instead of traditional bread stuffing, uh, we use plantains, bananas uh, stuffed uh, into the turkey. And instead of uh, mashed potatoes, we have arroz con gandules, rice and beans. And uh, in place of the pies, we have tembleque or flan custards. It's delicious. Sounds really good. It's delicious. Um, Pastor Gil Monroes, tell us about how you celebrate Thanksgiving. So, so Thanksgiving, it, it's a time of family. And uh, traditionally, uh, where I'm from, St. Thomas Virgin Islands, um, and my family, uh, we, we did recognize that it's a day that you can be celebrating with family. Um, we never had it as a religious holiday, even though we understand that there's some spiritual values to it. And so what we did on Thanksgiving Day was to, to serve others. And so traditionally, um, I don't have that experience in terms of, of the full meal on Thanksgiving Day, but we, we would cook. Uh, but again, it was very reserved simply because of our, our understanding, you know, in the biblical text of, of serving uh, during this time. Uh, Thanksgiving is also a time when you have uh, most people who are very depressed. And so what we try to do uh, from our uh, standpoint and you know, why we're here in this world is to, to give a little joy during that time. So most of our time we spend serving. Is, there, is, is Thanksgiving a holiday that's easy to adopt? It's easy. You know, my family, I came from the former Soviet Union and the Thanksgiving Day, it wasn't our holiday. Uh, it was a, a real American holiday. And, I love this Thanksgiving because I can bring the whole family to one table. You can talk to each other. You can play with my children. I can play with my grandchildren. And I love this Thanksgiving because it's not formal. It's a real family holiday. I love them. But we cook the traditional turkey, but we have two, two interesting uh, accents. One Russian accent. We can try to eat turka, but to have a drink Russian vodka. <laughs> and second, Jewish accent, because sometimes uh, Thanksgiving coincides with uh, Hanukkah. You know, you can get a little bit latkes. And latkes and vodka and turkey, this is our the main, main dishes and, uh, on the table. 
I love this and I would like to tell you the Thanksgiving Day, now it's our, the best holiday. And so what does it mean to you, Misha, to celebrate Thanksgiving? I came from the former Soviet Union. It was a totalitarian country. And we were hunger of the freedom. And for us, Thanksgiving Day, it's a holiday of freedom. This is so important for the people who came from the former Soviet Union. What about for you, um, Elizabeth, what does it mean to celebrate Thanksgiving? Typically, Thanksgiving is a time of family, and you know everyone comes on over for this, this big feast. But it also signifies the start of the Christmas season. And so often you'll find uh, in many uh, Latino households decorating of the tree uh, at the same time you are celebrating Thanksgiving. So it really has a special religious significance with the start of the Christmas season. What about you, Pastor? So, so while we do recognize and acknowledge uh, Thanksgiving, um, we appreciate the fact that uh, we look at the lessons, the spiritual lessons, which is to be able to serve and to give God thanks for family and friends. And so for, again, it's, it's for me, so I'm, I'm playing a, a, a big balance because, you know, um, my, we don't celebrate it as a religious holiday, but we still, you know, acknowledge that, that, that people, you know, love their family around that time. So we try to find a lot of spiritual uh, connotations and lessons in being able to give thanks for the things that you have. Not just, we want to move beyond just the turkey, just the food, and, and try to make uh, individuals understand that you need to thank God for a lot of things in your life, for your family, your life, you know, what you have done for the year, and, and acknowledge that time. Thanksgiving is a multicultural holiday. Why do you think that is, Elizabeth? You know, I have to hope and, and, and wish that uh, being thankful is something that transcends all cultures. And so I think it's a, a, a wonderful thing to adopt, a wonderful ideal to adopt, um, not only on Thanksgiving but throughout the year, but to take one day aside just to be thankful for the blessings that one has. I think that has widespread cultural um, admirability. Interesting. The Russian-speaking community is not only one ethnic group. Mm -hmm. We have four ethnic groups in the Russian-speaking community. Bukharian Jewish community, Georgian Jewish community, Mountain Jewish community, Ashkenazim Jewish community. Now you can be together. On all of us can be around one table. You can talk to each other. You can drink. But you can bring our friends, friends from the Chinese community, mm -hmm. friends from the Latino community, friends from the different community. You do it, it this is the experience of our multi-ethnic life. You can change our ethnic prefer mm -hmm. preferences. And I love this because we are all Americans. And I would like to congratulate everybody mm -hmm. who is together with me, who is around of me, all my community, all another community was this Thanksgiving Day. What was it like the first time you celebrated Thanksgiving? For you? Oh, it was very interesting because I came in 1997. It was a day before Thanksgiving Day. Somebody, a teacher from Nayana, he explained us this, uh, he gave us the history, the roots of the Thanksgiving Day. And this it was the first day when I ate the turkey, you know? was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your favorite part, the turkey? Yes. <laughs> I would think the vodka and the latkes. I, I was I thinking so too. Well. <laughs> vodka, latkes, and turkey, this is the best. And so um, what about you, Pastor? Why do you think uh, Thanksgiving is a multicultural? Every culture loves food. And every culture have the specialties in food. Mm -hmm. And so from the Russian community to the uh, Latino community to the Caribbean community, um, every culture loves food, so if, even though you don't have a turkey, uh, you sure know how to cook. So it transcends all nationalities because it has to do with food. And how many, how many years have you been celebrating Thanksgiving? Um, well, I have not traditionally celebrated right. Thanksgiving, but we have recognized it. And so what we do again is that during this time, as we, as we can see, is that it's a very lonely time because Thanksgiving, uh, the Christmas season, is a time for family and individuals who have lost loved ones as I deal with gun violence victims in central Brooklyn, we can see the brokenness. So we try to move out of just worrying about ourselves and serving ourselves and serving others. So for me, my celebration is by serving. And that is what we teach and we affirm. You know, I love this uh, Thanksgiving Day. You know why? Because it's time of travel and I can easy park my car not so far from <laughs> the building. 
Sorry, so what exactly do you serve? I'm sorry, I'm going back to what you were just saying. When you said serve, I said, no, well, well, we serve meals to, to individuals, um, to homes, and we go out and we serve to, to those who are less fortunate than ourselves. Traditional, traditional. Yeah, yeah, turkey and, and all the nice stuff. With a twist, of course, you know, you have the peas and rice and, uh, you know, we, we throw in the ox still uh, there. We don't have just the traditional turkey alone, but you, you do everything, curry chicken. You know, so you try to, to make a good meal out of the day, of course. <laughs> good. And so, um, what is there something that you're thankful for this uh, this year, Elizabeth? I am thankful. I had a phenomenal 2013. I did a lot of traveling. I met a lot of wonderful people, and so it it reminds me um, of uh, how blessed that I am. Uh, I have a terrific family, a very large family who will be coming. I'm cooking this year, so they'll be coming to uh, to my house on uh, Thursday. So um, I'm thankful for the wonderful experiences that have opened my eyes to so many new things this what year. What exactly will you be cooking this year? I will be cooking my pavo chan, uh, but I will have sweet potatoes. <laughs> Come on over. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Misha? This year it was an amazing year. You know, my grandson, he won the international constant, uh, contest. He is a pianist. Mm, okay. And uh, he's 17 years old. For me, it was like a miracle, you know. And I'm proud. I'm proud, you know. I'm also know a little bit the music, but he is a professional. Okay, good. that's good. What about you, Pastor? So we're thankful for, for me personally, I'm thankful for my family, definitely my wife, my, my children. It's, it's amazing at the end of the day, um, and doing funerals and, and seeing the loss of loved ones. Mm -hmm. You're very thankful for your family. And then you're thankful for your community that you serve that you have an opportunity to actually live out what your calling is. And so it's very important to be able to thank God for the ability to do work in the community. Okay. What are we going to be cooking? W will I be cooking? No, what I'm going to be cooking? Why, no, I'm not going to be cooking, <laughs> but, but we're going to be serving. Um, traditionally on Thanksgiving, for the last five years, we've been serving 500 meals uh, to five hospitals in the Brooklyn area as our give back to help those who are in the AR ER room have a warm Thanksgiving meal. Um, on Thanksgiving Day, so that's what we'll be doing on Thanksgiving. That's great. Well, I wish you all a happy Thanksgiving, and thank you for being with us. Thank, thank you. Thanksgiving. Thank you. Happy holiday. <laughs> you too. <laughs> happy holidays. <laughs> Still to come on the show, a merry mashup when two holidays happen at the same time. Before that, Abby Ishola has some other news. Thanks, Zyphus. Here's a look at some headlines from the ethnic and community media. From the Bronx Bureau, Bronx residents are calling for parks in the area to have more crime control. Though the NYPD reportedly doesn't keep track of crimes in Starlight Park, many residents fear going in. Some complain about the large crowds of students who hang out there. According to the Bronx Borough Board, the Bronx has fewer park enforcement patrol than any other borough. Yet the borough has the highest percentage and highest acreage of parkland. Residents in Red Hook are still being hooked to communal Wi-Fi. Color Lines reports that post-Hurricane Sandy, members of the Red Hook Initiative did a test run of community-built wireless networks to allow residents to report flooding and other emergency necessities. Specially equipped routers were placed on rooftops of project buildings to strengthen local wireless signals. Since then, the program has expanded by placing internet hubs atop churches, schools, and community centers, allowing dozens of residents to connect to the web. One retired soccer player is speaking out about racism within the sport, reports France Amérique. Lillian Toram, the former captain of the French national soccer team, recently spoke at a forum held at New York University about the issue. Since leaving the sport, Toram has been working to combat racism in soccer through the Lillian Toram Foundation and his recent book titled My Black Stars from Lucy to Barack Obama. During his talk at NYU, Toram referenced an incident when AC Milan striker Mario Balotelli was mocked by opposing fans who threw banana peels and made monkey sounds. He says it's up to the entire team to take a stand against such behavior. Colorful religious temples have become a common sight in Elmhurst, Queens. Voices of New York explore the religious temples in the area that mimic the unique beauty of worship centers in their mother countries. The Wat Buddha Thai Tavorn Vanaram is one example. The courtyard of the part brick, part ornamental building boasts a fountain and a massive statue of Buddha. 
Nearby, the Hindu Gita Temple Ashram on Corona Avenue is adorned with statues, flowers and wreaths, holiday lights, and bright colors. The various religious temples and the community's public library that includes collections in Bengali, Chinese, Hindi, and other languages are evidence of the area's ethnic diversity. According to the 2008 to 2010 American Community Survey, more than 80% of Elmhurst residents spoke a language other than English at home. And finally, Manhattan Times reports that a 2,000 square feet garden art project in the shape of Manhattan will be on display at the Duarte Square on Canal Street. Artist Juan Lee Carrion reached out to immigrants throughout the borough to find out about their homeland and how their roots can be represented in the display. Carrion says the project is a community garden and he hopes the plants will survive through community efforts. Those were just a few headlines from New York's ethnic and community media. Independent Sources will be back right after this. Thanks for staying tuned to our special Thanksgiving edition. As many of you already know, this year is something of a celestial anomaly when it comes to the holidays. Hanukkah, the Jewish festival of lights, and Thanksgiving fall on the same day. An event so rare that it won't happen for another 70,000 years. Some have taken to calling the day Thanksgivinga, and the blogosphere is rife with non-traditional recipes for this mashup holiday. With me in studio today to talk about some of the fun dishes is Tamar Genger, executive editor of one of the most popular kosher websites, joyofkosher.com. Thank you for being here, Tamar. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Givaka. Um, your website, you know, you guys have done a lot of different recipes. So what's been the talk on the website about uh, this holiday? Oh, most people are so excited. It's just exciting, I think, to be able to have a time that I think more families are getting together. You know, a lot of people come in for Thanksgiving but aren't necessarily together on Hanukkah, so this is a time that they can come together. And then especially fun is the food. Every year we try and come up with new recipes, new, obviously, latkes and donuts are kind of the standard Hanukkah recipes, and, um, but you always want to come up with something new. You know, we're foodies, we're into coming with different things. So this year, Thanksgiving really gave us an opportunity or a, a, a way to... To, to go with all of our recipes, you know, trying to infuse the flavors of Thanksgiving into our traditional Hanukkah recipes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I know you brought in some really amazing dishes, and what do we have here, this, this first dish here? Okay, so I, when I first thought of this, I was trying to think of something fun and exciting, and I thought of stuffing latkes. Stuffing, obviously, we have on um, Thanksgiving. And this actually might be better even for the next night than it is for the actual Thanksgiving, but it would be great on Thanksgiving. Or you take your leftover stuffing and turn it into latkes the next day because Hanukkah is an eight day holiday. So, you know, we get to enjoy it for more times than just the actual day. So, um, so basically, I just took takes any stuffing. In this case, I made an apple sage stuffing with rye bread. So, that was my other little like Jewish, you know, twist into it. And, um, and then I added some egg, and then you can, and actually this one's baked. So mm -hmm. typically, latkes are fried, and part of the miracle of Hanukkah is the oil that lasted eight days. Right. And so we fry things, but you know, we sometimes can take our um, you know, liberties. And in this case, um, it is nice, it's easy, and it's a little bit less oily by just baking, especially if you use stuffing that was made in the turkey. Mm -hmm. It has enough fat in it, it can just um, you know, go in the oven. Okay, so, so. so what kind of prep time are we looking at for, for this dish? Well, the stuff, if you have stuffing already, it's mm -hmm. very quick. It's mm -hmm. probably like five minutes, and then you just, you know, bake it in the oven. It takes a little while in the oven, probably 30 minutes or so to get really nice and crispy. But um, if you have to make the stuffing first, it's still not so long, probably another 20 minutes or so. Okay. So it's pretty easy. So tell us about th these dishes here. Okay, so here we have sweet potato latkes, and I have sautéed green beans. So sweet potato latkes actually are not even a new recipe for me, but it's one that I've always loved, mm -hmm. um, just as a quick, easy change from the regular potatoes, right. a little you know, added nutrition from mm -hmm. the sweet potatoes. And, but, of, but of course, when we thought of Thanksgiving, it's also just perfect. You know, it's right. a perfect older one that works so well for the holiday. And then we have actually this apple cranberry sauce. Apple cranberry yeah, sauce. Yeah, because usually we serve latkes with applesauce. Uh -huh. So um, with the sweet potatoes and with the turkey and everything on Thanksgiving, I made it an apple cranberry sauce. Okay, so, wow. Well, you know, so another bit. fusion. Exactly. All right, exactly. all right, all right. And then the green beans, I use a little bit of olive oil, which is part of the miracle of, of Hanukkah, as we talked about. But um, it, you want to have as many vegetables as you can also so that you're um, not just you know filling up in all the carbs and all the starches. You want to have something to keep it a little lighter. And I like green beans because you can really sit and just sort of almost snack on them. They're crunchy, mm -hmm. especially when you, you just saute them a little bit with some garlic and olive oil and a little bit of salt. And um, you really can eat them all day, and it's not that many calories. All right, wonderful. Before we go off to the donuts, you mentioned something that's really important. We know that you know Thanksgiving time to get a little crazy with the food, you know, unbuckling of right. belts and so forth. Um, and I also know 
that with some of the traditional foods at Hanukkah, there's a lot of frying. A lot of it uh, is right. on frying. Now you, in your other life, if you will, <laughs> you are also a nutritionist. Right. Right. So for, for those folks who are probably trying to look for a, a, a bit of a healthier turn in preparing these dishes, is there maybe a healthy uh, alternative, maybe frying with olive oil, or, or what's the case? Yeah, so typically we do try and use olive oil anyways. It's mm -hmm. part of the holiday, and that's a healthy oil. So a little bit of frying is totally okay. It's a holiday time, and you want to enjoy. I think, you know, not only the Thanksgiving again, but we do have the eight days of Hanukkah, so you do want to think about every day. It's maybe some of the days you want to bake something, you want to switch up, go into zucchini and other vegetables that you can use, not just having always potato latkes. And I think, there, but there's something to be said, people. Some people have said, you know, they get upset when you try and mess with tradition. Right. <laughs> so, I, but again, I think there's eight days, and so you want to start with enjoy your tradition one day, and then, you know, change things around the other days. Right, right. Now, is, now has that been something that you s you've seen on your site, this whole idea of some folks feeling like, hey, you know, this is one of the holidays is going to get lost in, 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 in the confusion yeah, of it all. Yeah, yeah, definitely some people have felt that way, and they're, you know, people are saying they're, they're just keeping it on Sunday. I mean, if somebody told me that um, grandma doesn't, you know, believe that latkes go with turkey, you know, right. so she's doing a, she's having everyone over Thanksgiving and having everyone again, again on Sunday. So, you know, um, some people feel that way, but then other people are just so excited to try something different and have, you know, the, the combination. Does the excitement over Thanksgiving and the, the meals and the, the kind of the fusion, does, does that surprise you or is that something that you're kind of like, hey, this would have been a something perfect when you thought of it when yeah I think it's, it was perfect I think we had all kind of started thinking about it a little bit but it, it def did get a little bigger and more exploded a little bit more than I expected about it like all over the internet and everything and what people are interested all right. so on, on your site I mean what what are some of the reactions that some of the people are saying uh, mostly people were just looking for different ideas how can I make something that you know that that works with Thanksgiving and Hanukkah that, mm -hmm. that includes both of the, those flavors and so um, I know some people talked about sweet potato latkes that being like they're the, the easy go-to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. some people don't want latkes but they want something that's somehow connected to Hanukkah right so I guess that's where we get to the donuts right <laughs> right and, no, and now perfect segue yes. you're better at this than I am <laughs> To the donuts. Um, tell us a little bit about the uh, the donuts that you have over here. So typically we, we have um, fried donuts on Hanukkah, again, back to mm -hmm. the oil. But because I am a dietitian, I prefer not to fry when possible. Right. So again, I do think latkes are really good fried, but donuts, I feel like, can be made baked. Okay. And so it's also it's really easy, and um, you just have to get this donut pan. So that's mm -hmm. the only different thing, but it's they're very cheap, and they make it, and it's just so fun to have, be able to like bake something, and it comes out with these little shapes. You right. know? So these are cranberry donuts with a cranberry glaze, cranberry orange, actually. And I actually made them with whole wheat flour, too. Okay. So extra nutrition bonus. Good, good. And then you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see later. But um, yeah. So um, basically, I just you know put the chopped up cranberries into. It's actually whole wheat flour with a little bit of cornmeal mm -hmm. for flavor. And um, and then it's like a cake batter essentially. And you put it in here. And then I just made um, some like almost like you cook the cranberries a little bit and make with a little bit of orange juice. And then you mix in some powdered sugar to make oh, wow. the glaze. Oh, wow. So um, yeah. So even and the cranberries are healthy too. So you get a little bit of um, you know antioxidants from the right. cranberries in there. There you go. So um, so we do pretty good. All right. Now, you know, as we talked a little bit about trying to get a healthier, a bit of a healthier approach to cooking at this time of year, you know, a lot of people will say, hey, listen, we like to do it our way. We like to fry it with, you know, either vegetable oil, canola oil, whatever. Is there anything lost as regards to flavor when you try to cook healthier at a time like this? You, when you use like a, your olive oil or you use Instead of using whole wheat flour, you use instead rather instead of using mm -hmm. you know white flour, you use whole wheat flour. Is there anything lost as regards to flavor? Do you? Think? I think it depends on the recipe. I, I really believe these are great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, they smell <laughs> great, by the way. Again, and, and it wasn't affected. And I usually, you know, my husband isn't as into the whole wheat stuff, so and right. he loved these, so right. I felt like and he didn't know. Like as long as they don't know, right? <laughs> uh, I did use white whole wheat flour, so that's why it's a little lighter, right? And, you know, so um, so it does look a little better. Um, the flavor can. It depends on the the, the thing, you know, the the dish. Um, I think that these all work really well, and most dishes can be adapted, and you won't notice the flavor, and that's the goal, obviously, of eating healthy, is that you won't notice the difference. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, as regards to, you know, keeping healthy and, you know, kind of m managing how you eat on, on, on Thanksgiving, we have four dishes right here, right now. Are there other dishes that are available on your website that you know all oh, yes, can see? Oh yes, of course. So between myself and we have a bunch of contributors to our website as well. So um, people have created a, a tons of different types of latkes. We have some uh, latkes and other fusion recipes. We have pumpkin donuts and pumpkin latkes. Those are fried donuts. Um, but I did actually test them out. <laughs> I had to take a picture for them, and mm -hmm. um, they were really good. Uh -huh. So that is exciting. And the, and the pumpkin latkes were fun too. Those came out good. And um, somebody made Brussels sprouts um, fake bacon latkes. 
Brussels sprouts fake bacon <laughs> latkes. I, I would love to see that because I'm trying Sounds to envision really it right now. No, it's a beef bacon. So, <laughs> okay. um, so you know, just because obviously we don't eat right. um, regular bacon. And she also did an interesting um, latke with like a um, leftover turkey idea. Uh, wow. yeah, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but right. it's really cool. <laughs> oh, wow. That's amazing. <laughs> that's a good idea. That's amazing. But we, we talked a lot about the food here and we haven't really talked any about your site itself. So tell me just a little bit about um, what your website does, please. Uh, it's a food and recipe website that's all kosher, mm -hmm. and we're really there to support the community and be there to, for people to talk to each other, ask questions, and for ourselves to um, to be there to, as a resource for people looking for kosher food, whether you're kosher or not, um, just to show that obviously if the food can be delicious, kosher or not, and um, and the fact that we can have everything be kosher is is you know part of our site. Yeah. Right. And now, um, is it a site where? folks can just contribute? Is it like a um, something where home cooks can just contribute? And yeah, say, hey. so home cooks can contribute. Um, so I, I'm on there. We have Jamie Geller. She's a best-selling cookbook author, and she just came out actually with Joy of Kosher um, Cookbook. And um, we also have a magazine called Joy of Kosher. So, um, so we have a lot of upper places that we, you know, that we that we publish, and then home cooks can also be a part of it by contributing their own things and just and, and also commenting. We have lots of different opportunities. For so, involved. folks can go to the website and check out other non thanksgiving uh, Exactly, kosher. definitely, yes. All right. Well, Tamara, thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you. Um, you can see recipes for these dishes and others on Tamara's website, joyofkosher.com. Thanks again, Tamara. It was really an awesome time today, and it was great meeting you. Thank you. Me too. All right. That's our show this week. I'd like to thank Tamar for being in studio with us. On behalf of the entire team here at Independent Sources, I'd like to wish you and your family a happy Hanukkah and a happy Thanksgiving. Till the next time, be independent-minded.